your past. You ain't got to be scared. I know many of you all have seen the debate the other night. But how many of y'all know that God has not turned his world over to nobody? He's the Alpha and he is the Omega, the beginning and the end. He's the first and he is the last. So we know what kind of God that we serve. You know, it would be a shame for God to bring you all this way and you be shaken by Thursday night. Continue to trust in the Lord with all of your heart. And lean not into your heart and your own understanding. Amen. Amen. Give God a hand to have a prayer. I want to invite you all who are screaming in and looking in to come on in the house of the Lord. Amen. Where the feast of the Lord is going on and the tables is spread over here at First Baptist Church of Peace of 4240 Rain Avenue North. Well, I'm Pastor L.D. Pastor T. N. Miller. Amen. Let's give him a hand. We <laughs> got today, y'all. Let's go to the uh, last song in the book. That is the 150th song. Psalm 150. Psalm 150. When you found it, please stand in reverence of God's word, please. The Lord is still speaking. He the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. We ought to obey Him. Amen. Praise ye the Lord. Praise God in His sanctuary. Praise Him in the firmament of His power. Praise Him for His mighty acts. Praise Him according to the excellent greatness. Praise Him with the sound of the trumpet. Praise Him with the psaltery and harp. Praise Him with the tremble, with the timbre and dance. Praise Him with the string instrument and organ. Praise Him upon the loud cymbal. Praise Him upon the high sound of cymbal. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Let us go to the throne of grace. We have come into this house and we have gathered in his name to worship him. Forget all about yesterday. Concentrate on him.
songs, and if you know them, I want you to sing them. But let me say how glad I'm to see such a large choir stand for today. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. That was a man on the radio named Tall Paul. Y'all remember him? And he used to have something that's known as Oldie Gold. So we're going to go back Oldie Gold today. Y'all be more than me.
the miracles and the mass choir.
my spirit that we're going to get this done. And you know, uh, 42, 40 ain't seen nothing yet. Six on your side ain't seen nothing yet. And y'all tell me that it's paid for. I'm going to be just like David. I'm going to run out of my clothes over to the moment. I can't take them off. I, gotta, I just, I just take my hat off and just say, Lord, I thank you. Do you know before we pray? Do you know how it feels to pay a bill? Yes. I, I just want to ask you a question. Do you know how it feels to pay a bill? It ain't now one of you sitting here ain't never had a bill. And to be able to pay that bill off, but. So we're grateful. I'll tell you now, I want to pay this bill off. And if you're looking online, my cousins all out of town, my kin folks all out of town, send me some money. And we can pay this bill off. We ready to pay this. Eternal God, our Father, we come down to say thank you for the gifts and for the givers. And we pray, oh God, that it be used to the glory of thee. These are the blessings we ask in that name. Amen. Bless you. My brothers and sisters, I'm delighted, I'm excited to have one of my sons here with us today to bring a word from the Lord. He has passed a church here in Birmingham. He has been faithful on his job at Alabama Power. Shady Grove, we are grateful for him walking in today to be a part of this church service. Amen. Michael don't need no introduction. He's tall enough to, to be seen. And we are grateful for that. He has gone through a lot. But God has kept him. He has seen life's ups and downs. But if he testifies, he said, my good days. I'll wait my bad days. And there's some of you in here can testify. There's got to be a little rain. Yes, yes. I hope not, but a little rain. Yes. In your life to appreciate right. the sunshine. Yes. That, 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 you, know, you know, this is what I, I, I try to place emphasis on. When you know what you know. Yes. And when you know who you know. Yes. And where he has brought you from, you can say, I got so much. Yes. Y'all can get that little bit to you. I got so much to thank God for. And when you know where you once were and where he has brought you to, you know, it really doesn't matter. You can be in the midst of high, sophisticated people. But when you know what God And you might not be able to just do but every now and then you ought to take your right hand and hold it up and say, Lord, I thank you. You know, I, I'm not asking for anything. I just want to thank you for what you already done. I don't know nothing, but Lula, I want to thank you.
the next voice you will hear, my son in the ministry, Reverend Michael Young, he will take this pulpit and let us pray for him. Will you raise your right hand and say, Pastor Yara? Yeah. Preach the word. Preach the word. Pastor Yara. Preach God's word. Thank you, Lord. 
uh, all of the things she did as the pastor's wife behind the scenes and all of that. And on top of that, with Ari, it was time to get away. Mm -hmm. Because my salvation through all of my problems was preaching. <laughs> that, that kept me in my right mind. Yeah, right. Uh, everyone was saying that I was strong. I wasn't strong. The Lord just was working. Amen. Uh, yeah. Which is, and as I said, in the nine weeks since I stepped down as pastor, God has blessed me. Yeah. Of the, this makes my ninth church, of the nine churches that I visited, I preached at seven. Amen. Uh, this is number seven. Amen. This is the seventh one. And the Spirit told me to come here. Everywhere I go, the Spirit tells me to go. And my assignment when I left here, when Sonny and I left here, my assignment was as a pastor at the age of 36. <laughs> Coming back here, my assignment was that of an evangelist. Amen. Amen. The message that you all will hear is the message that I have preached. This is not uh, six, seven times, six times. Because I did a pastor's anniversary in, in the middle of that. But this message is the same message that I preach. And if you all remember Reverend Walker when he would preach on Saturday mornings. Yeah, yeah. He did a series on John 3.16 that he preached about 33 times. But I'm on my own series, and each time I preach it, it changes. The text is the same. The subject is the same. What comes up out of my mouth is different. So you all will benefit because I was sitting there praying and talking to the Lord. Uh, more revelations are coming now. But it was good that I had to come home first. Now I, I cooled the church down. I got to get it back high. <laughs> but I had to get it uh, to everyone on Facebook because uh, all of my friends who've been following me everywhere I preach, God has allowed my reach to go. Of the churches that I've been at, their Facebook, their YouTube, their national audience. I've heard what you're about to hear. Uh -huh. and, and the reaction, we'll wait to see what your reaction is on a personal level because God's going to move. Uh -huh. uh, but that's enough of that because I preached at Big Brother John King Church. He said, yeah, I know you used to preach an hour, but I said, John, I know you. I'll be there 30 minutes. I did it in 35. Because <laughs> <laughs> you never know right. the Holy Spirit. That's right. Do. But, uh, and the church I preached at last time and made the mistake that I got out. I said, okay, I can handle that too. <laughs> but all things being said, if you will, this is for me, would you stand at your feet in recognition and reverence of God's word? For me, the passage. If you need your Bible, you can open it up, but look at Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1. Very familiar passage. And I will be reading from the King James translation of his word. In that first verse, the unknown writer says, Now faith is the substance of all things hopeful. The evidence of things not seen. This morning our subject will be faith and faith. All right. You may be seated in. I've got to call for my help. Dear Heavenly Father, once more and again, Father, I stand behind your roster. Yeah. Father, I'm in heaven with no ability, unable to do anything. So, Father, I come before your throne 
asking for you to anoint and pour down into this vessel your Holy Spirit. Provide me with wisdom and knowledge. Then, Father, I said that you might stand up in my stead. Yes. That someone in the sound of my feeble voice may be helped by what will be said. In your son Jesus' name, I say amen. 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 In this text of Hebrews 11, 1, uh, this 11th chapter opens up with what faith is mm -hmm. and what happens. And then we go through the roll call of great faith believers mm -hmm. that were in the Bible, Amen. in particular the Old Testament. But faith and faith, yeah. mm -hmm. all of us proclaim that we got faith. Mm -hmm. But some of us, our faith is like the weather. Mm -hmm. All right. The weather man missed it on yesterday. All right. It was supposed to rain and we moved out by 10 o'clock with clear skies for the rest of the day. But it rained sporadically all the way up until about 3 o'clock. He guesses. But one thing about faith, you can't have faith. If you don't have Jesus. Amen. Come on. Amen. Come on. I need to establish that foundation before I go forward. Yeah. Because otherwise you won't understand what I'm talking about. Yeah. Yeah. You must have a relationship with Jesus. Amen. Amen. And because you have a relationship with Jesus, it gives you an access and a relationship with God the Father. Right. And through your relationship with Jesus, yeah. you have access to unlimited power mm. through the Holy Ghost. Yeah. 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 So your faith is important mm. as you go through life, right. as you experience tribulations. Yeah. Faith. What is faith? The writer said. This thing, this belief that we have, this belief that we have in Jesus is the substance. Substance is something that, that I can hold and feel. I can't see it yet because if I see it, I don't even think. All right. See, see how many of you all are believing that God's going to move in whatever situation you See, see, you're believing in that and, and, and the substance of that, the evidence, the concreteness of it, is the evidence is unseen. That's why you must have a relationship and believe in the words that's printed in this Bible about Jesus. Because in every life, some rain's gonna fall. Yeah. All right. Yeah. All right. Yes. It's good to shout, mm. run around in this church, say, "Man, come made up, yeah. dressed up, yeah. eat something, but oh, mm. what happens when the storm comes in?" Yeah. All right. When the waves begin to crash, mm. and the pillars may roll and the dashes may break, what happens? Yeah. Right. Mm. Are you still sanctified? Yeah. Glorified? Yeah. Praise yeah. God yeah. when trouble comes in. Right. Right. 
That, that's why we sang that song, Trouble Don't Last. Oh, oh, amen. Amen. Oh, amen. But if you don't have a relationship with the master, if you don't believe in the words that was printed in the Bible that you read, you got a problem. Amen. Amen. And the reason I'm hammering this faith, I'm hammering about you and how you portray yourself to us in these walls. Because it's going to become imperative that you have that same strength when trouble comes. Yes. 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 Mm. Now, now, now. It is the, the evidence which we, we can't prove it. We can't see it. We can't right. feel it. We, we just know mm -hmm. God's going to make a way. Yeah. 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 Cinnamon and lay people will not understand your faith walk. They won't understand how you are holding up yeah. when the normal average person would fall apart. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But see, I like that song. I'm looking for a view. But, but I want to take you now to Joe 1. I hope y'all didn't sit on your Bible. I hope you didn't close them up. Because the illustration to what I just brought up to was just my springboard. Okay. We in summer Olympics now. Field track and field, you know, they're going to do that deep dive. They're going to go on the springboard, get on the board, so they can jump into the pool. That was just what I wanted to begin. Faith and favor is illustrated in Job 1. When you look at Job 1, and I told you, when you profess, you profess to us. Because we look at you, you all look nice. You all probably praying for people and amen and the pastor and all that good stuff. But God's watching you. God's watching your antics. He's watching your piety, your holiness, your favor. He's watching you. And because he knows you, yeah. he's going to put you on the front of the line. <laughs> In Job, Job lived in the era with Abraham. Yeah. They assumed, but it was in that era. We need to look at his prologue. We need to find out who he is. Look, the scripture says, there was a man in the land of us whose name was Job, and that man was perfect and upright, and one that feared God and is few evil. Now you said you got that faith. You got that relationship with God. Look at Job, who lived in a time before Jesus came. He lived in a time where there was only Jehovah. And all of these other I got. But he was a man that the right of my way of the Holy Spirit says he was perfect and upright. Can that be said by any of us? I'm going to sit down and wait on y'all to get your car and get me an answer. I didn't come to play this morning, man. Y'all ain't got to get quiet. I just need you to do a general analysis of this stuff. He said, Joe, this man who like us was born in sin and shaped in iniquity. This man was perfect and upright. Perfect means there was nothing wrong with him. Perfect in God's eyesight. Which means that he had a relationship with God like Enoch. Remember, Enoch was so upright that God just let him walk on up into the heaven. Yeah. Yeah. you sanctimonious Holy Ghost being a saint in him? Got that much Holy Ghost in you? That y'all can walk around in heaven, walk in heaven, I ain't saying the club. 
You know, we got to walk when we go into the places. Uh -huh. We got an outfit that we wear. <laughs> That's going to compliment our walk. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but he was upright, which means he lived right. You know, we only sanctified in this church. Don't let somebody step on your expensive shoes. You done heard the good message, but you let Lucifer get the best of Don't let them mess up your dress, ladies. I'm glad y'all have enjoyed 23 years of good views. But with time, they're going to get like the boys that were down on 44. <laughs> Where you may snag your dress on the splinter from the wood. And I know you're going to say, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Chairs in my church and got rid of them cues that had been there for almost a hundred years. Mm -hmm. uh, they were tearing up some old school. One that feared God. This word fear means reverence. Mm -hmm. Not totally different. When you reverence something, you give it respect. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. When you respect God, when you reverence God and live a right. You don't have to be in the presence of the preacher, pastor, who is the man and want to put your drink in. When you was turning it up with God, who's was everywhere. You didn't give God the reverence, but you give man reverence. You, you don't obey God's law, but you be up on the pastor that you terrified by because he is stern. <laughs> Job is our model citizen. That's why this book is in here. For us to see how we're supposed to be when before we get into our trouble times. So if you live in this life, when trouble comes in, you're going to be able to hold up. See, we don't know what you are, who you are, until trouble comes in. But because God knows us, we see the prologue, but we got to get into the persecution. The scripture says, on the day of that the sons of God assembled, Lucifer showed up. And if you're not a Bible scholar, you don't understand that God allowed Lucifer to show up even after that he had fought a fight and rebelled against him and he had cast out one third of the angels and sent us Lucifer to be over prince of the air of the earth. But he still allowed him to come into his presence. And he was bold enough to do it. Mm -hmm. yeah. And on that particular day, God asked him, what do you mean? Ah. God knew a man, but God asked him a rhetorical question, what do you mean? Ah. He said, I've been to and fro, up and down the earth. God is seeking, but if God didn't even ask him what he wanted. God, the next verse you'll see God told him that they tried my servant Job. See, see, now I'm going to help y'all out. See, you all want to give trouble and credit to Lucy when hard times stuff happens. The devil is in it. He just messing me up. No, Lucifer can't do anything to God's children unless God allows him. And that's what I said, you need to be who you profess to be. Man. Yeah, right. But, and, and Lucifer.
Lucifer said, yeah, I know about him. He real good. See, I, I skipped over a part. That's what I told you. I, finished, I jumped to the wild one to be too quick. The other prologue to Job, Job was a wealthy man. The next verse, verse 2, begins to describe to you his wealth. He was prosperous in children. He had seven sons and three daughters. All right. He had sheep, oxes, cows, a huge serve. His children live so lavishly that the sons had a heart. Every day of the weekend would invite their sisters over. And because Job was so upright and he feared that his children may have sinned against God, he would offer sacrifices yeah. and pray each day to make sure that they were covered by God for anything that they may have done. Yeah. 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 All right. Want to talk to my men right now? Wow. Fathers, have you been praying for your children and particularly right. your sons right. to the Lord that they may be covered for whatever that they may have done? I'm glad. That's one. I'm glad. I didn't do it. Mm. I prayed that they wouldn't get in trouble, but I didn't pray after the trouble. But this man was so upright and righteous, he did it daily. An example for us. See, I know mamas and grandmamas do that, but we dads, we're hard. Mm. We, we believe in doing as I say. And not as I do. We believe in the fear of God in your child. If you a man. I ain't talking about you think a man trying to do I'll put you out another day. I ain't gonna get into that. I don't know the time limit. I forgot before I got on the phone. I, I forgot I don't know the time limit. So so we know he's welcome. So when Satan is up there, Satan said, you know I can't mess with Job. You got your head on him. You got a hedge around him. And that's why he praises you because you blessed him with all of the luxuries that he had. Yeah. God says, I, I, I will take my hand off of him Come on. touch his body. And I just want you to know, don't you touch nothing else. His soul don't touch him. Lucifer went in and went down and began his persecution on Job. And what, what the first thing he did was he started attacking his possessions. See, see, you should not treasure your possessions, church. They're not up for your sins. Treasures he on earth. Well, moth and rust and destroy them, but put you some timber. Yeah. Lay the treasure up in heaven. Yeah. See, because if you value things, things can be destroyed. Yeah. And if you are recognized by the things that you have, your bank account, your job, your car, yeah. your home, your children, the church you attend, you in trouble. Yeah. Yeah. But, but Satan began to take his possession. On that particular day, immediately, one servant came back and told Job that the Saviors had come in and got all of the sheep, had taken the sheep and killed all of the servants but me. I'm the only one left. Another one came back and said, that the oxen, the camels, had been taken away. Killed all the servants but me. Yeah. Let me get it right. I'm going to give y'all the real stuff. Uh -huh. He said, There came a messenger to Job and said, The oxen were plowing and the asses feeding by the side. And the saviors fell upon them and took them away. And by the sword all was taken, but 
See, Troy, while he was yet speaking, telling Job about that problem, notice what happened. Any of y'all been in this situation? While he was yet speaking, there came also another and said, The fire of God is fallen from heaven and had burned up the sheep and the servants and consumed them all. While he was yet speaking, there came also another servant and said, The Chaldeans made out there three bands and fell upon the camels and have carried them away and by the sword killed everybody. Yes. Any of you all had trouble to come at you in ways? Yeah. It may not have come simultaneously. It may have been months apart. It may have been years apart. But it came sooner than you could get over your first tribulation. And, and I want you all to remember how you reacted when trouble yes, kept coming. When deaths in the family kept coming, Amen. and you were left trying to understand, Lord, what's going on? Yeah. You were seeking answers. Yes. But notice here, with all of that, the final blow came in. Word came to Job again that a wind had come in. And Caused the house where they were at yes, to fall down. Everyone inside was killed. Yeah. All ten of Job's children yeah. were destroyed. Yeah. Could you see yourself? Yeah. You lost your material wealth. Ah. Now you lost your offspring. Yeah. And here you are faithful and yeah, I know you want to question God, but Satan wanted Job to curse God. Yeah. Yeah. Notice here, all Job did was begin to put himself in mourning. Mm. He covered himself in suit and sackcloth and began to mourn, but he did not curse God. Yeah. That wasn't enough for Lucifer. On another day that the sons of God had assembled around God, Lucifer came back again and said, he wouldn't curse you because you're still protecting him. Uh -huh. If you just let me get a hold of his body, God said, all right, just don't touch his soul. Uh -huh. He immediately went down and struck illnesses on Job, covered him from head to foot with all that was so bad that they were bursting and oozing in it. I read somebody that said words was coming up out of it. It was so uncomfortable that he took the shards of a jaw and was scraped his wounds in. Could you imagine how much pain and suffering he was going through? But in the midst of his suffering, he still did not curse God. He said, a man born of a woman is born of two I came in the candle church that when you're going through your tribulations, when you're going through your trials, just remember you are here for a little while and you're going to have trouble. But remember, God sent trouble your way because He said, Have you tried? See, see, God knew what Job was going to do. God knew the extent of Job's faith, but he also knew Job was human. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. After this, and he still wouldn't curse him, Satan went off the scene. Mm -hmm. When trouble broke out in the house, his helpmate, his confidant, his love, said, you must have done something for the Lord to call all of this to happen to you. You need to talk to him. He had to put the woman away. Then his friends showed up. And y'all had them friends that tried to console him. And they made situations worse. I'm going to tell you why. 
the reason they made it worse because they can only talk to you from their perspective. What what they gone through, they have not gone through the magnitude of things that you have gone through. Yeah. All right. And they were looking at your position that you had with God and now you've fallen so far. So automatically they start thinking you must have seen that God did this to you. Yeah, I know that question. Boy, what did Michael do that God has been messing with him? I know he done did something. But after each one of Job's friends had that conversation, Job only wanted to talk to God. Yes, God. That's how we need to be. You just need to talk to God. Yes, God. You got to have a conversation with God. And just like Job, after you have that conversation, God reminded Job that, where you there? All right now. When I created the universe, when I put the universes, all of the stars out there, where you there? Where you there when I made all of creation, including you? And after he put Job in his place, Job couldn't say anything, but he remembered, he still did curse God. He had questions, and we will have questions for God. But you should never curse God for the situation that you find yourself in. Your faith takes over. Your faith takes over and you will be rewarded. A lot of you have gone through tribulations. You've lost children. You've lost spouses. You've been sick. Cancer got you. You've lost the breast or whatever. Amputee on dialysis. A lot of people in the sound of my voice are having tribulations. Yeah. Yeah. And they are continuing to grow. But just remember, your faith is what's going to get you through. Yeah. Your belief in Jesus that all of this was already written before you were ever born. And because he was so faithful, Amen. his faith kicked in. God's faith kicked in. Mm -hmm. The faith of God kicked in in the 41st chapter of Job when it opens up with the 10 children that Job had. Restoration was coming. Yes. God restored his seven sons yes. and his three daughters. Yes. He gave them his family back because he was faithful. He was trusting in God because he didn't have evidence that anything was going to happen, but he knew God was in trouble. And notice the blessings on wealth. He had 7,000 sheep, but God gave him 14,000. He had 3,000 camels. But God gave him six thousand. He had five hundred donkeys, but God gave him a thousand. He had one thousand oxen, but God gave him two thousand. He had a large household, but in restoration, God allowed his household to get bigger, and they lived for 140 years. He, he was the greatest man of the East, and he was able to see four generations of Jews. That's faith. See, God will take what you've gone through and he will bless you according to your faith. So, so don't, don't be sitting back and say, boy, it's me, I'm not done. Just say, God, it's your will. Let, let your will be done. And, and see, I close this sermon each and every time because I have to tell you my Job like this. Yeah. Yeah. Some of you only know recent history. But, but God allowed Satan to mess 
with me physically in 1980. The last week of January or the first week in February, I don't remember, but I had my first brain surgery. And I turned 21 in the hospital. And the only thing the doctors could say that was causing me to have had these grandma seizures from the age of 17 until now was that I had to have been born a mother lord baby. And I wasn't a mother lord baby, I was a big fat baby with a big head. I look at the baby pictures and I recall my mama telling me how I would suck a bottle and nothing but apples would be in. But, but from the time I was 18, driving home from Alabama, to get off on the cabin and drive through Bethlehem through Power Plant and up 18th Avenue, didn't know I was passing my future wife's house to get to Fairfield to get back home, but between Fairfield and Malfunction Junction. If I had stars, if I saw stars, I knew a headache was coming. And it lasted for eight hours, and I have gotten caught on 59 right there, trying to get to North Smithfield Mountain. But, but that's just how long it went on, but God had designs for me that he allowed things to happen to be me. Four months later, in June, I had a second brain surgery. I got out of work from St. Nelson's in the linen department and cut my parents' grass, but I stopped by and was drinking beer with the older ladies. I came home and take a shower and sit in the floor, woke up four days later in neurointensive care. My shirt too was too long and mama told me that I was talking about treasure chests. I don't remember none of that. I did fine for four years. Got employed at Southern Natural in November of 1980. When employed, I said, do you take, I had brain surgery. Pre-existing, you couldn't get insurance, but I got insurance. God covered me. But see, after the first brain surgery, the mothers of the church told me, Michael, the Lord saved you to be a preacher. No man, no, he didn't. <laughs> I put my running shoes on. Right? Now, I, I was a good church boy because I was a super tutor, Sunday school teacher, went out and spoke for summers. I was a, a trustee at the age of 21. I was a good church boy. But I was a typical man. I was out there in the streets. <laughs> but I was running and I ran right into him. Mm. But 85, 1985, I had my third brain surgery. Mm. I told my son of playing basketball. I wasn't supposed to play basketball because I only had a 50% chance of living. And if I got a blow, I could get a clot. And I didn't have paralysis after each of my surgeries. I was fine. I hung up my basketball shoes in 85. I did fine until I accepted my assignment of pastoral in 96 in July. In October of 96, my shunt after 17 years disintegrated. I was supposed to be coming here for a program, but Sonia and the children came and I stayed at home. And I did the uh, well, exorcists, I was early and all over the place because my head was hurting so bad. And they had to drag me to the hospital. I had no control over my motor activity. They replaced my shunt, took it out of my jugular, and my new shunt went into my abdomen as a drain. So from 1996 to now, I 29 years I got a shunt that had not disintegrated. I only see my neurosurgeon every three years. He wanted five. God is good. But 85, I got to go to 89 when I ran into the Lord. I was in denial. But I came and confessed. Once I confessed what I was, God kept me to he told me, because my goal was to get to California, he kept me here to accept my assignment. And that was to pass 
Easter. Now we fast forward to 2018. September 6, 2018, I had a massive heart attack at work. I didn't have shortness of breath. I didn't have no pain in my chest. I gained weight from 2016 on because I saw the pictures. I saw how big my head was. Um, I didn't know I was having a heart attack until my hands turned blue and my cue at work. And I told the young lady next to me, call the paramedics, I'm having a heart attack. Hmm. I had gotten off the phone with something about a hour before. And so I got a good cussing out when, when I got to the hospital because I didn't tell her. I said, well, I just thought it was indigestion. Hmm. But she had talked to the paramedics. I went to UAB 10.30 that night. I had had a uh, wood maker. Nobody lives from there. The largest artery was 100% blocked. The second largest one was 90% blocked, and I was alive. I went through rehab and rejuvenated 10 months later. Relapsed again. I had to have a triple bypass. God calls my stints. I had five stints in me, and they occluded, which means the body antibodies attacked them, and they clogged up. So they had to bypass that brain and put me five stints. I was good. That was 2019. 2020 in the midst of COVID, I had a month. My heart, January 8th, I went to see my cardiologist. February 18th on my birthday, I had an echo with a cardiogram. March 8th, right before they shut us down, he told me, he says, yes, there's something with your valve. I said, which valve? I said, no, they knew about it. I said, they knew about it. I just had open heart surgery. They knew about it, they didn't fix it. Well, they thought it was the mitral, they could go through your groin, but it's not your mitral, it's your pulmonary. I said, so I gotta have surgery again. I said, okay. Ten months later, after going through tests and fighting with them to get into a hospital during COVID, July 1st, I had my second open heart surgery, I had a pulmonary valve replaced, and I'm gonna show you how God worked. My first surgery, only mother in law babies had that problem. Doctor, uh, Doctor, oh, my name went blank. Doctor, uh, anyway. I, I, much as I tell the story, much as I know it, I don't know much. I want to call him stairs now. Uh, Davies, Dr. Davies, fine, who was the big man in Cali, biggest neurosurgeon here back then in the 80s, the Davies house. He said I had a newborn baby. Well, God would have his son, who was the head of cardiology at UAB. He's a big man. He told me, he said, cardio, the pulmonary valve only happens to newborn babies. I said, your daddy said the same thing. That's how, and he, he was the best one to do my surgery. I made it through all of that. I don't look like the enemy of any child's dog. I can show you my scar, my jugular, I can show you my chest with the incisions. Uh, I got there. In fact, I was at the emergency room Wednesday. Because God had fixed it. I had been bottoming out, which means my blood pressure had been getting too low. Mm -hmm. June 16th, before I went to go preach, an hour and a half, my blood pressure went down to 71 over 53. Wow. This past Sunday, did the same thing. It was 51 again. Told me to drink plenty of fluids. It happened the third time. Go Wednesday. I went out to breakfast. Got home. Got bottom. Now the bottom went out because I was flushed. I got in the bed. Stayed up for 20 minutes. Got up. Was about to pass and I'm rocking the river. Blood pressure was 84 over 51. I had to wait till it come up. I drove myself to the ER because I knew that the number was a five hour wait. I got out of bed. 8.50 p.m. EKG, blood work, hard monitor to didn't show nothing. I was over medicated because I keep a notebook of my readings morning and noon. He said, thank you for the record. All I see is low blood pressure. We need to take you off some of your medication. Mm -hmm. So I stopped taking Lasagna. I didn't take Lasagna Thursday morning. I took my blood pressure. 
it was 116 over uh, 70. I didn't take my Cabello off. That's my main blood pressure. I had gone from Thursday until Saturday morning without taking any BP medicine. Oh, yeah. So I had to take it. So yesterday and last night, I took my blood pressure pill. But God removed my pressure, mm. my stress, my job, and my church. Amen. That's why my blood pressure has dropped uh, hey, because yeah. my stresses are uh, gone. See, that other part, Job had the physical, and then he had to go through the mental anguish of tragedies. You know, my tragedy started with our reading. I had just come off heart attack and brain and uh, open heart, two open heart surgeries, and had to deal with the death due to tragedy. Mm -hmm. 16 months later, Sunday died mm -hmm. from a successful kidney transplant. Mm -hmm. Four months after that, my mother died. So I did three eulogies in two years, two and a half years. And through it all, I'm saying. Through it all, I'm saying. I'm glad I have looked like what I can do. But, but, let's see, now I gotta get to my favor. I gotta get to my Redemption, my restoration. Yeah. All of that, God kept me. Mm. God restored me. I hear people talk about all the time, you look younger. I say, well, that's God doing it. Right. But uh, He is going to provide me. And I got to do the transparency here because I've been hiding and running. Sunday will be dead two years in November 19th. But as I preach from here and I preach constantly at my church, I had known Sunday from the time she was 19 and I was 20. I met her in 79. We were married for four and a half years. I, 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 I have to be married. That's all I know. That's all my life. And see, I have a good marriage. I, I don't have no negatives to talk about. Right. I, I have a good marriage. So right. I, I, the Lord's going to restore me yeah. with a wife. Right. So I, I need to, I came home to tell y'all that because I've been preaching this everywhere I go. And it changes, but nobody's never heard this version. I will have a wife by the phone. Amen. So, y'all ain't seen her, don't know who she is. Y'all just seen this man walking around here, everybody trying to figure out what's going on with him. He got to have somebody. Yeah, I got somebody that keep this smile on my face. Right. Go ahead, Michael. So, uh, Michael is off the market. Anybody got me, Michael's off the market. Michael been spoken. Y'all heard it at first back. First, y'all don't have to wonder what kind of got going on. Y'all in that. I, 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 Sonya wouldn't have it no other way. It's coming. It's coming. You all will see it in the future. So when you see it, y'all say y'all heard it here first. Just Sonya too. I, I don't look this way. I, I told y'all what my credentials was, the criteria that had to happen. Spiritual, able to cook, take care of me, and love me. Had to do that. Had to be the right one. I was blessed that this person has attributes of son. I had to stop telling her because they're too similar. I ain't lying. It scares me to see son in somebody else that acts like son. 
That's God. Restoration. That's what I want to tell you all. And now I'm going to get out of here. I can't get out. I got to do my last thing. I got to do my clothes. I got to get there. And we're going to be out here and y'all say, Rev. Yarbrough did it all. <laughs> It is. Now, uh, this is what I close out with, which tells my story. This is the review of Michael's life. The Wiggins brothers. I am a living testimony. Church, and now I can stand up in the church and say, You've been in my bed. I ain't been in your house. 
So I want you to understand that real quick, fast and in I'm not the one, man, the one. When I get ready to shoot the shot, I'm gonna shoot the shot. So when you walk out of here, I don't never, I'll tell you when I'm getting ready. I ain't got no shame in my game, baby. So don't come looking at me in a negative eye, but if I want you, I'll get you. If I don't, you can go home about your business. To God be the glory to God. I thought I'd just drop that nigga to you, cause see, I know some of you got your eyes on it, but pick your eyes off and tell the Lord give you something in there. your pastor. And that's where I stand. And that's where you're going to treat it as your pastor. Anything else? I don't need that. Don't even come my way up to my house. I don't need you to come up there. I cut my grass. I wash my cars. I clean my house. I do it all by myself. Now, some of y'all even had it so you, you, you didn't understand that when I adopted Jay, was Jay my biological child? No, he ain't, but he's mine. And he's going to be mine. So don't get him caught off. Say, did, did you get that outside child? I tell you, I got one outside child. Her name is And she in Mississippi. See, some of y'all, you try to be so, you know, you, you keep a mess. So it's best to nip it in the bud right now. Get, you, don't get, you got the right string, but the wrong yo yo. <laughs> so let's clean the Let's clean the slack. Let's clean the slack. I want you to do me a favor if you don't mind. If you don't mind. I want you to go in your pocketbook and in your pocket. I want you to show some love to Reverend Yahweh real right quick. Come on, bring me some money here. Bring me The doors of the church is open. The doors of the church is open. Would that be one?